Okay, here we go. Uh, so I'll directly uh, move to uh, tapping mode. Uh, just to recap of uh, what we learned last time. Okay, so these are different modes of AFM. If you are interested in uh, learning uh, in Zoom and SCL, please uh, text me. Uh, okay. Uh, or email me, rather, email me because I don't, sometimes I don't get time to. Uh, yeah, I don't get time to check the chat uh, information, though it comes to me, it is saved. So here I uh, showed uh, how. Uh, basic force imaging uh, works uh, that is pretty much same for uh, all the AFMs and uh, there I taught actually how the participation of different uh, uh, atoms takes place. This is the generic design of uh, any AFM. Most of the AFMs are uh, like this. And then I showed what is the difference between STM and AFM and uh, the resolution limit uh, of STM and AFM. What are the parameters on which uh, the resolution limit depends? How do you control the tip sample distance? I mentioned about feedback loop. Uh, that feedback loop in STM is much simpler because it follows the exponential decay of the current, tunneling current. And the feedback loop in atomic force microscope is far more complicated because uh, depending upon the distance between tip and sample, the nature of force can be quite complex. It can be repulsive. It can be uh, attractive, depending upon. Uh, also, it has got uh, various contributions from uh, all kinds of forces, magnetic forces, electrical forces, and uh, capillary forces, as well as van der Waal forces. So that makes the force distance curve quite uh, complicated. Uh, and then I uh, showed the difference between contact and intermittent mode, and we saw many animations. And uh, in the contact mode, I showed that uh, what kind of three information we get. This was the explanation for the force distance curve. If you are interested, that is also a very deep, uh, separate uh, uh, lecture. Um, so jump to contact and then uh, jump off contact. I mentioned all those things, uh, trace and retrace uh, curves. These are very special things actually, especially for biologists, they are highly useful. Uh, people who are doing uh, ligand receptors uh, interactions, chemical force microscopy, this is amazing want to do the chemical force uh, microscopy. And then we move to the contact mode imaging. We mentioned about two modes, constant uh, force mode and constant height mode. I, we mentioned that constant force is basically where you, where you try to keep the uh, deflection uh, constant. But if you are not able to do that for rough samples, you tend to get uh, error measurements, you know, the, like, and that is very useful. Uh, Right, uh, so these are the three information you get in the constant uh, force mode, height and deflection and friction. So this is friction force microscopy, deflection uh, is uh, the roughness, and this is the height of the sample. And constant uh, height mode, uh, we mentioned that constant height mode is uh, relatively reserved for uh, flat samples, as you can see here, 
gallium nitride sample and uh, normally it is not used so there is no feedback loop here so this mode is uh, very fast so if you want to ultra fast uh, measurements uh, fast scanning which is actually a dream these days in afm uh, people are looking for ultra fast measurements which is the dream actually and then so this is what uh, uh, okay so then we move to uh, trivology kind of uh, things where you would like to compare two surfaces for their smoothness and roughness otherwise it just remains uh, very qualitative that when we say smoothness uh, uh, or roughness it doesn't uh, so what is the quantification either use some optical methods like surface uh, ellipsometry uh, spectroscopic ellipsometry which i plan to teach because this lockdown is going to get extended so i thought some students there are many students and then i'm going to teach uh, uh, x ray diffraction and x uh, x ray photo electron uh, spectroscopy uh, as i promised to many students including nilu and uh, tubai and many other students so i'm 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 going to continue these classes after this uh, uh, ncl course work uh, ends so also i wanted to teach some advanced things uh, in afm that also will be done uh, so, so contact mode is basically high resolution and there are uh, problems because of the capillary forces as we mentioned that in the rainy season like this uh, contact mode imaging on hygroscopic samples is quite difficult uh, and another disadvantage was that you have both uh, lateral force and normal force uh, on the sample so if you if the set point is too high if this if you are tracing the sample too close you are applying too much of force vertical force then essentially uh, the tip also get blunt so uh, this mode is known for uh, giving you high resolution images and uh, it is fast considered fast so if the set point is not set properly so in fact uh, this can damage the uh, uh, sample as well as tip so if tip get blunt so you may end up getting uh, low uh, you know basically worse resolution images rather than high resolution images so high resolution image depends upon uh, the quality of tip uh, so don't think that okay uh, i mentioned that okay uh, dr putar mentioned that okay contact mode imaging is giving that gives high resolution it gives high resolution only when the tip is uh, intact the tip quality matters a lot if the set point is too uh, high and if you are dragging the tip too much then uh, you are not going to get high resolution forget about that we'll discuss it uh, yes there is there is something uh, which i prepared yesterday artifacts in atomic force microscopy that is really beautiful lecture you will enjoy it uh, so let's see uh, so these are some of the examples from uh, contact mode now we'll uh, move to the dynamic modes uh, i'll not show the animation today because i have already covered in past uh, so today we are going to uh, see uh, two modes tapping mode and non contact mode both are dynamic mode even force modulation is uh, dynamic mode force force modulation is essentially you do the force spectroscopy on different different points uh, basically you keep on doing force uh, spectroscopy uh, at each pixel so this is amazing mode actually uh, so in dynamic mode the tip is oscillating all the time and uh, in uh, there are various ways you can do that so uh, you can see that uh, this is the cantilever and this is a uh, sample and uh, this is input uh, signal sinusoidal signal you are applying to the cantilever and uh, this is probe oscillation piezo so basically there is a piezo oscillator and you apply electric uh, voltage to this piezo uh, and we already know that pierre uh, curie uh, invented the piezo uh, 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 piezo resistive uh, 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 you know properties of the material uh, piezo electric properties of the material sorry uh, and when you apply the sinusoidal uh, voltage so what what exactly happened this piezo uh, material will also uh, 
move uh, up and down it will flex and uh, it will contract it will contract and it will expand so uh, there may be some uh, phase lag from this to this but it doesn't matter uh, what is the phase lag so because it's already uh, calibrated so this signal uh, this basically piezo when it moves up and down so this uh, basically oscillates this uh, cantilever also uh, with the same frequency and uh, the same amplitude so for example when you apply the uh, when you apply certain voltage uh, you can you can uh, control the uh, oscillation uh, frequency oscillation uh, amplitude so you have, if you apply larger and larger voltage so the tip starts oscillating uh, with the larger amplitude so that's the way you can control the oscillations uh, amplitude and frequency so uh, now because laser is falling at the tip uh, of this cantilever so so the laser point here also keep moving uh, sideways you can see that on the photodiode so uh, the frequency of this uh, should be the same uh, as of the input signal so this is the output signal which is also in voltage so basically you are sending uh, voltage which is getting converted into the mechanical movement mechanical movement is getting detected by the optical movement and optical movement is getting optical signal is getting converted into back to the voltage so what's in and what is out through the uh, mechanical and mechanical to the optical and optical to the voltage so now you can compare whether uh, input signal is equal at, uh, equivalent to output signal so that is done by uh, all kinds of frequency analyzers in the afm lock in amplifiers so this these two signals can be easily compared in the electronics of atomic force microscopy so what you would like to uh, compare first thing you would like to compare whether the amplitude is the same right so for example this is the free amplitude uh, when the tip is far away from the uh, surface so you know the free amplitude so you have recorded that okay this is the free amplitude and amp free amplitude is in fact controlled by uh, this signal uh, strength and then you know what is the phase so for example when this uh, signal is peaking here so this signal should also be peaking here if it is if it is somewhere here that means there is a phase difference and uh, third thing is the frequency so frequency difference is also there that uh, suppose this frequency is uh, a few uh, kilohertz so if this can be checked whether the uh, signal is coming uh, at the same frequency so now when uh, this uh, vibrating cantilever comes into the proximity over the sample so please remember that it experience it's oh sorry it starts experiencing the force from the uh, surface so because this tip is not stationary it is moving moving up and down so instead of uh, measuring a flat force which was the case uh, in um, in the contact contact afm with the con in contact afm if the tip is held at one place then it will measure a certain amount of Uh, non variable non varying force but here uh, even if the tip is held at certain one place one pixel it's not moving uh, okay in x y direction but because it, this tip is moving in z direction out of the plane direction because it is vibrating so it is essentially seeing the for force gradient df divided by df de delta f divided by delta z so it is experiencing force gradient because it is uh moving closer to the uh, surface and it is moving uh, uh further from the surface so when it comes uh, closer to the surface it starts experiencing larger and larger force so force is like grabbing uh, the tip so this is similar to the um, the magnet and uh, steel plate example so when magnet comes close to the steel plate magnet which is uh, hooked to the spring so you, you will see that uh, there is a there is some kind of a heaviness in the uh, there is some kind of a, a stiffness in the in the spring because it is getting it's like you know weight has increased so weight has not increased but uh, uh, when the magnet comes close to the uh, you just bring two magnets close to each other you will experience that uh, when they come close to each other you will experience that as if the weight of the magnet has become very high you understand so that is effective mass so it happens exactly happens in the cantilever this cantilever also so cantilever mass 
uh, effective mass increases because of attractive forces because effective mass is increasing so then it will uh, increase it will uh, decrease the uh, uh, spring constant also sorry it, it in increases the spring constant the spring constant spring also becomes uh, uh, basically more stiff spring constant is uh, changing because of the applied force so then obviously the resonance frequency will change so resonance frequency doesn't uh, uh, remain constant so here uh, amplitude changes because it will not vibrate at the same uh, frequency as if uh, you bring a vibrating uh, magnet uh, close to the steel plate uh, the spring is basically moving up and down you will you will see that there is a damping in the magnet when it comes close to the uh that's a nice thought experiment actually you will find that there is a damping because of the force uh, pulling from a uh, steel plate which is underneath so exactly same thing happens that there is a change in the amplitude change in the phase and a change in the uh, frequency now it is up to you uh, what you like to detect so the problem is that you would like to look at the topography information and uh, other material properties of the surface that is the problem and how do you solve this problem uh, you indirectly uh, get the topography information uh, from the change in the amplitude or change in the phase or change in the frequency so now we uh, can see that what is easiest so easiest is uh, to change to uh, pick up the change in the uh, amplitude it is quite difficult to change the uh, so to measure the change uh, change in the frequency so normally in the non contact mode uh, when the tip uh, does not non contact mode basically tip is vibrating in attractive region uh, somewhere somewhere uh, here but it doesn't go to the repulsive mode so in the intermittent contact or tapping mode you can see that uh, it uh, in this mode the oscillation this oscillation is quite large so it covers it it taps the uh, surface so that means when it taps then it is going to the repulsive and then it moves away so this is this range is quite large in in uh, non contact mode it doesn't touch it just remains uh, in the uh, attractive force attractive region attractive force region and we'll see what are the advantage and disadvantage so uh, so the Uh, problem is that uh, i'll come to that later on the non contact modes so okay so, so as i mentioned that there are two ways you can do that uh, you can keep this oscillation quite large which is the normal tapping mode and you can uh, keep this oscillation small and that is called the non contact mode here uh, so normally in the uh, intermittent contact mode uh, we uh, do the measurements in the amplitude uh, detection or amplitude mode so what we do we get the amplitude change of the cantilever and that gives us the information about the surface properties including topography in the non contact mode uh, we normally go to the frequency detection and uh, uh, normally what happens that we uh, do this measurements in uh, ultra high vacuum because uh, because Uh, the problem is the water layer water layer is the enemy because uh, the tip is just hovering over uh, very close to the surface so water layer the capillary forces can grab the tip uh, towards the uh, surface so uh, then this non contact mode is not possible in uh, it's not possible in the uh, ambient conditions so that is the reason that this mode is uh, though it is it can give you atomic uh, resolution uh it is highly sensitive but uh, uh, it is normally done in the uh, high vacuum or ultra high vacuum there should not be any water vapor so this is a specialized mode but it is this this mode is really considered as uh, uh, one of the best mode possible uh, essentially so let us uh, look at uh, the tapping mode uh, so as i mentioned the non contact mode is basically small oscillation amplitude attractive region and uh, this is more accurate uh, and it is close contact uh, okay and tapping mode is basically large oscillation so this technique involves large probe uh, tip sample forces so that can be a slight destructive destructive also but not that much 
so let me move to the uh, okay so as i mentioned in the uh, dynamic mode this is the free amplitude and as soon as the cantilever comes uh, close to the uh, surface and there is a you can see this blue is the water layer so, uh, so there is an amplitude uh, reduction uh, because of the tip basically uh, it appears that tip is tip has become very heavy because because of attraction just uh, imagine two magnets coming close to each other so you will feel that oh, it's so heavy to pull them apart magnets have got the same weight but they, because of the force it appears that same same problem uh, with you uh, your own weight that uh, suppose you don't want to reduce weight suppose you are like 80 kg 90 kg and uh, you want to uh, feel light so you go to the moon you will immediately feel very happy that uh, oh you are so light you go to another planet which is much more denser and much more larger than earth uh, you will feel that you have become more heavy hmm? so the same problem uh, because of the attractive uh, force uh, which is acting on you uh, from uh, the planet earth or, or or moon or any other uh, planet so uh, same uh, logic works here so depending upon the force uh, being larger or smaller now uh, as i mentioned that this strip is uh, rapidly going in and out of this force range so this is not a static force it's a dynamic force it's moving up and down so force is almost all the time changing so if the force is changing then k is changing the frequency is changing all the time so frequency is changing all the time the phase shift is also there you can see that this is phase shift you know this is called phase shift okay and this is amplitude change and the frequency change you already know so everything is changing now it is up to you uh, as i mentioned that you can detect either amplitude or phase uh, or or frequency it depends upon what kind of uh, uh, measurements uh, you do so uh, normally uh, we do not use uh, soft cantilevers in uh, tapping mode we normally use hard cantilevers uh, and uh, bar shape and uh, the cantilevers are uh, uh, you know the spring constant is quite large tens of nano, uh, newton uh, per meter and uh, this is the oscillation amplitude as i mentioned that when the tip is far away this is tip sample separation in nanometer when the tip is far away and uh, there is no van der waals force so then you can see that tip amplitude is there is no change it is constant as long as as uh, as soon as the tip uh, samples uh, distance starts going down so this amplitude starts down 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 and then it becomes when tip is touching the uh, surface then obviously there is no change in the there is no um, oscillation because you are the tip is grabbed by the surface so there is no there is zero amplitude so you can see this flat line and this flat line is because tip is so far that there is no force and uh, here uh, you have already reached to the repulsive force and tip is touching so you can't uh, so this is also uh, shown with this uh, amplitude uh, change so this is another way of showing uh, and uh, this i already mentioned that there is a change in the force df over dk and uh, that will change the uh, cantilever frequency resonance frequency of the cantilever will undergo change because k is changing and f is equal to square root of uh, k effective divided by m and m is also changing so fine so let's move ahead uh, so this is the summary that uh, uh, these both the modes uh, amplitude uh, so when amplitude is high you can detect uh, uh, sorry amplitude when amplitude is high so that means it is called tapping mode intermittent contact mode and there you mostly detect uh, amplitude and phase is also detected mostly uh, we use in my laboratory uh, we detect phase also uh, when uh, we are uh, keeping the amplitude uh, low so then amplitude detection is not normally done we use phase detection or frequency detection which is which is not there in this table but these days you can do the okay so let us see next uh, we can move faster 
and this is quite important that tip passes through the contamination layer so water layer is essentially contamination layer there may be some other contamination uh, somebody has put the fingerprint on the sample because i have seen many times that students uh, come to my office uh, with their sample uh, for afm measurements so they will be holding the sample uh, with their finger can you do this uh, afm on this sample and they are they are just giving me my my hand but i i mentioned that uh, see this is very serious thing this this problem i have seen uh, uh, quite a lot so they will just keep give me the sample they will just carry it in the hand uh, this is the polymer can you do the afm uh, you know we have heard that you you know quite a lot of afm hmm. uh, as if i am some kind of a service provider or something like that can you do this afm okay and <laughs> the same moment i am holding my hat that what nonsense actually uh, you are talking about uh, force measurement on a surface and atomic forces and uh, you are just holding it like this hmm. so the moment you hold the sample then then the surface is uh, different you know a lot of grease is there your fingerprints will be there lot of dirt is there so what what do you want me to measure so you have to be very careful what surface you are giving you know don't uh, modify the surface that is a uh, sur you know surface chemistry should be what you want to measure okay and another thing that uh, storage of the sample should be uh, very careful that it's it should not happen that uh, all kinds of dust and debris they are collecting on the surface so you will see the same thing on um uh, in the microscope you will see all kinds of things so be very careful when you handle the uh, specimen that is the key actually to good uh, okay so let's uh, move to the next slide so uh, you can see that there is always a contamination layer uh, which is normally water and uh, the thing what advantage is that uh, this uh, spring constant is so high and it is it has so much energy that it can break free this contaminant capillary forces and it can touch the surface and then it can pull back the both movement so this is the advantage that uh, capillary forces can overcome uh, when you are uh, measuring it which is not possible uh, for uh, uh, no contact actually uh, non contact measurement hmm? so what do you do basically you set the drive amplitude and frequency and set point also amplitude set point that's okay uh, i give you the balloon example the say uh, the distance bit of balloon uh, you have to set that how high you would like to uh, fly the balloon for example 50 meter away from the surface so here what we do that we uh, set that uh, the amplitude that this amplitude change i want okay this is the amplitude set point and if the amplitude goes lower than this just raise the tip uh, until this amplitude becomes normal you know what whatever is my set point if it becomes uh, amplitude becomes higher that means uh, force is dropping the why force is dropping because you are going quite high surface is uh, uh, tip to sample uh, distance is larger that means your force is weaker that means amplitude is returning to its normal amplitude so that means it is time for the feedback to lower the distance tip sample distance until you reach that uh, uh, amplitude set point so that is the logic that is the feedback and uh, gain is basically pid gain pid gain i told you that uh, in the balloon also you have the option that how do you want to control the uh, distance difference between set point and uh, your uh, actual uh, Uh, height from the surface so uh, one is proportional one another is integral and uh, uh, third one is differential so gain is to gain to high means you are you are basically you want to you have instructed the afm to keep the uh, um, set point uh, too tight actually so means you are closely following the set point so any change in the amplitude uh, away from the set point immediately you uh, change the parameter in such a way that it brings back to the uh, uh your set point amplitude set point but that is res sometime results into the noise so higher gains gain means you are scanning too close and uh, too fast 
and that can sometimes result into the noise also so gain has to be adjusted uh, uh, you know in the right way uh, that is the trick which you do when you uh, start measuring so uh, you already know that uh, you have you provide the signal to the cantilever sinusoidal signal and uh, so this voltage uh, sets the mechanical movement up and down on the specimen and then this laser uh, also uh, starts uh, moving up and down and this laser basically the signal is recorded uh, here in the photodiode and then there is a feed this is called feedback loop okay uh, feedback loop uh, output signal adjusts z position so z position and x y position they are adjusted and that's how you scan the uh, sample for its heights as well as the surface properties hmm? so yes so let me move ahead so as we uh, saw in the contact mode that uh, this amplitude uh, uh, modulation is never perfect so for example if you are trying to measure the uh, topography of this particle and you can see that uh, you see this uh, particle uh, here uh, Uh, this is z in nanometer this is x nanometer you can see this is the height you can calculate this is zero and this is somewhere around 16.5 so height is height of this particle is around 16.5 nanometer so you can see this is so nice so accurate uh, which is not possible in any other technique so afm that's a beauty about afm that you, you can get the uh, size and shape so precisely but if you notice that uh, i will discuss in the artifact that uh this xy this dimensions are sometimes uh, convoluted because of the tip uh, shape so if the tip is sharp so you will get closer to the uh, real uh, uh lateral dimensions but in fact if there is any uh, sharp jump and if the gain is not very high so you can see that there is a there is amplitude error also when the tip tries to go uh, okay so you can see now this signal is in millivolt it is not in the Uh, nanometer so because this is voltage reading this is a uh, reading uh, for the uh, scanner moving up and down so scanner is already calibrated in distance so you get the direct, you get the voltage you get the reading in the uh, distance okay so this is the image of uh, human red blood cell and uh, uh, this is the height image and this is the amplitude uh, image uh amplitude image basically you can see it in the it is in the voltage this is basically error signal for example and these are some other images uh from my own lab you can see this is the height image amplitude image and yes this is the phase image as you have been waiting you can see this image is quite different and phase is in the degree you know you can see this is 180 degree uh, uh, scale so this color means there is no phase change uh here this it's the same phase but you can see that uh, somewhere on these patches uh there is a large change in the phase so this is associated with the change in the slope uh, can lead to phase change also change in the property of the material so this is sensitive to, to the material properties as well as slope change okay and uh, this is very useful actually this is another image where we have compared uh, height amplitude and phase these three information you get simultaneously and you can compare because the scan area is the same 1 micron by 1 micron here 1 micron by 1 micron here 1 micron by 1 micron even here you can see the scale is uh, in uh, distance nanometer here the scale has to be in millivolt but you can convert it into distance by some calculation small simple calculation and this is the phase in degree so you, there is no need for uh, you know any conversion here unit conversion here so uh, as uh, we summarize uh, contact mode is fast it is good resolution good for hard samples lateral forces there big normal force because you are all the time uh, almost scratching the surface depending upon your set point and gain tapping mode there is no lateral force very small uh, so very small uh, normal force good for soft samples but it is slower and it is the resolution is much lower 
but if you uh, resolution may be will be compromised this may become uh, bad because of this normal force because normal force is very high so you can end up it's like you know you take pencil uh, you sharpen the pencil and uh, and you start writing if you start writing with lots of force uh, with freshly uh, you know sharpened uh, a pencil you will notice that uh, the the sharpness of the pencil uh, decreases the contact area becomes larger and larger and your font uh, which you writing becomes broader and broader you know it become blunt the same problem with that exactly you can you can basically uh, compare the uh, afm tip the same uh, way as you do with the freshly sharpened um, um, pencil uh, Okay, uh, lead. So uh, the harder you write, uh, it will become blunt. Then you cannot say that oh, I'm getting so bad resolution. Bad resolution because this your your tip is getting blunt because it is it is touching uh, the surface. So same thing if the pencil is slightly far from your paper, so it will never get blunt. Non-contact mode. If it is just tapping uh, one time. and then it is moving up your pencil so you can see that there is less wear to the uh, uh, tip rate tip radius okay jitna zyada ghisoge us pencil ko utna zyada kharab ho jayegi tutegi toot bhi jati hai tip bhi toot jati hai tip also get broken it get blunt it get broken sometimes it splits in two we'll see uh, some examples uh, and in the in the artifacts sometimes tip also collects the debris its own debris for example tip uh, this for example pencil lead it broke uh, it broke into the two piece uh, you know small part got broken so but the broken part remains uh, entangled to the uh, tip okay so then tip becomes so big, so large hmm. so these are the uh, things which you can read and phase imaging phase imaging basically this is a dissipation of energy if any phase change anywhere whether it is uh, your dielectric measurements which you do in electrochemistry measurements you do uh, phase change there also when you do i mean when you have this impedance analyzer or you do the magnetic measurements any measurements or any optical measurement wherever there is a change in the phase that is because of the uh, that is because of the dissipation of energy and dissipation of energy is due to the surface interaction that depends upon the uh, type of the surface so essentially phase shift carries the information about the viscosity properties as well as adhesive adhesive properties it's amazing mode actually uh, friction information is there and uh, so and so forth so you can see this uh, if you have different material so you will get the phase change so you can see the this is the original phase original uh, signal blue line and this dotted line is the uh, signal which you get uh, after uh, your tip comes in, into the contact with the uh, uh, sample you can see there is a phase change a uh, small phase change but when you come to the uh, come to different surface you can see that phase change uh becomes larger and larger so that gives you an idea about uh, softness or hard hardness or adhesiveness of the specimen so and phase contrast is sensitive to uh, difference in the slope as well so you have to be careful uh, that it should not be the case so there are some examples you can uh, browse later on so this is carbon black matrix with polymer fillers so you can see that uh, this topography image and this phase image so phase image gives you a lot of rich information in comparison to the topography information uh, topography image and this is uh, some other image uh, uh, yeah this is cell cell image and you can see sub, even sub cellular information you can get in the uh this is amazing actually this image is really uh, the example is quite uh, nice that uh, normally this is the complaint that afm doesn't give you uh, sub surface information so you can see here that because it's slightly tapping so uh, you get the sub surface information also which is not possible in the non contact mode non contact mode tip is not touching the surface so you do not get uh, 
the elastic elastic properties of the surface so i hope you noted uh, this difference that tapping mode gives you also uh, information about uh, elasticity plasticity means viscoelastic properties hmm? because it is touching the surface and uh, this is another image uh, this is uh, composite polymers embedded in a uniform matrix and you can see this is the topography image and there is much richer two component structure is visible here uh, in this image uh, this is tribe of tribe uh, block uh, polymer uh, uh, okay you can see that uh, this is the topography image uh, and this scale is uh, 80 nanometer this is 1.5 micron by 1.5 micron image and uh, as you can see that uh, phase image shows a uh, clear contrast and uh, you can see different components of the uh, tri block copolymer and this one is a langmuir project film on mica uh, langmuir project film basically gives you some monolayer as well as by layer and uh, uh, in the phase image you get much richer information about the so these are some uh, other images um, just for the sake of entertainment mostly science is over for this part just for sensory pleasure this is for to enlighten your senses not for the science for the senses hmm? so now question comes that uh, how you can see uh, see such a beautiful uh, you know images i go backwards uh, so there are two softwares um, which can be used uh, to plot these images so as you can see that uh, this is a two dimensional image and this is three dimensional image of uh, the corresponding two dimensional image so you can rotate it you can plot the way you want and this is the beauty of uh, atomic force microscope that you get three dimensional images and similarly uh, this is the three dimensional image of uh, this one and uh, this is a three dimensional image this is three dimensional image you can see yes now you can see the departure uh, from this to this uh, so this is uh, this image is uh, Uh, plotted by uh, different software uh, it is it is freeware it is available uh, on some website if you google w s s cross m i will send you the link so it is available for uh, windows uh, uh, machines it is not available for uh, mac machines so uh, this software is also quite uh, nice uh, so you can change many things uh, so so you can see it is look it looks even better the software gives you a lot of interest so uh, so that means the afm image from any uh, uh, brand of afm available in the market so the file type remains uh, more or less uh, uh, readable to uh, various softwares available uh, uh available you know uh, on internet mostly freeware so these are readable mostly okay so this is the beauty that uh, you can see some noise here also if you see clearly you can see some high frequency noise you can see some lines some ripples okay so this is used these are this is used you can see larger noise here Hmm, this is noise this is noise a lot of noises there whoever is taking this image uh, in my group only so how can you uh, remove this noise so where from where this noise might have come so this is uh, mostly these are this is because i think it's mostly mechanical noise because uh, you can see the frequency frequency is not that high if it is electromagnetic noise i won't be able to uh see that noise so easily so this noise can be easily removed uh when we uh do the image processing i will tell you how to do that
uh, again you can see all kinds of uh, surfaces so this one is a two dimensional image and this one is corresponding three dimensional image how beautiful hmm? again plotted in a different way this one uh, is taken from uh, somewhere some application note and i like this image because this tells you uh, the damage done uh, to the contact lens after wearing it uh, for a long time so this is essentially surface of a contact lens and if you see this pit this pit is the damage in the polymer film uh, it's a wear normal wear tear and this was done uh, in the physiological environment of i which is a saline environment so uh, so this measurement was done in the fluid cell tapping mode keeping the environment same so you can see uh, nicely uh, how the otherwise this polymer if you dry it up uh, this will this pit uh, dimensions will change as soon as you dry up the contact lens hmm? so you are, you may not be able to get the true uh, uh, pit dimensions when you dry it up so you can read this uh, this is a comparison between contact tapping and non contact mode this is summary and a couple of slides on non contact mode though it is not the uh, focus of the lecture because it's rarely done so there are two ways you can uh, do the non contact measurements one is basically you uh, oscillate the tip uh, above the contamination layer uh, you don't penetrate the contamination layer contamination layer is generally 2 uh, 3 nanometer so you know already that way to stop um, so if you do uh, non contact measurement by oscillating the tip above the contamination layer so as you can see that you are looking at uh, primarily the contamination layer uh, this uh, surface uh, feature get masked by the contamination layer you do not see the sample roughness so clearly but in contrast if you uh, do the measurements uh, by uh, breaking the contamination layer or within the contamination layer then you are able to uh, go closer to the uh, surface uh, morphology and this is quite better but uh, this advantage is that this capillary force can uh, drag the tip uh, you know adhesive force is so high that it can just get stuck it may not move mm. so in, the best way is that you remove this contamination layer or water layer by vacuum mm. so then you get very high quality images so these are some of the earlier earliest images like you can see the dna molecules in the uhv condition yeah it is beautiful that you can see individual atom uh, identification not just atom just but you can identify different atoms so uh, atomically resolved non contact af image of silicon and tin and lead atoms on a silicon surface so you can identify different surfaces um different atoms on surfaces so how can you do that uh, so this these are basically atom count and uh, these are different kinds of atom lead atom silicon atom and tin atom stannous stannous atom so you can see the different different count and this is based on the attractive force so attractive force uh, will be different or uh, different uh, atoms because of the size because size is different so if the size is different then force will be different isn't it amazing uh, so this can be done in uh, ultra high vacuum uh, conditions so so you can see the different kinds of atoms i think uh, one student uh, wanted to uh, let me see if sarvani i think uh, from hyderabad she was interested in this kind of work Uh, she was here she was listening to this talk in the morning i think uh, sarvani yeah from hyderabad university that was her uh, research target and she had been writing to me emails to inquire about that so now you have 
the capability uh, that you can do uh, this kind of measurements but you have to collaborate with some uh, established lab which the lab which has got this uh, uhp uh, mode uh, non contact mode then it is easy uh, then there are some other applications that uh, this is a molecule some kind of molecule i'm not very good in this uh, organic chemistry uh, i'm sorry so this is simulated this is mima this is a dft uh, calculated uh, image uh, and uh, electron density map and uh, this is a stm image uh, similar to the uh, mimicking the current density map electron density map Okay, so this is STM image. You can see of the same molecule. This is benzene ring. This is benzene ring. So because of benzene ring, you can see this is the electron density around the uh, benzene ring. And uh, so you can see that you are not able to distinguish between two rings because this probably form a big uh, ring uh, of uh, uh, current. in stm basically you are measuring the current so uh, everywhere here you will measure because of the pi electrons uh, they are itinerant electrons so uh, because it's two mem two rings are joined together so you will see something like this but if you do the same thing uh, using afm which is not dependent upon current so in current measurements you have a problem you may not see the rings separately but uh, in force measurement because you are not measuring the current in the non contact afm look at this beautifully that you can start seeing uh, both the rings clearly amazing this is the beauty actually of uh, you can't even do this thing in uh, electron microscopy uh, so nicely probably uh, advanced versions of electron microscopy high resolution aberration correction you can see but uh, this is much more simpler because there is no need for um, sample preparation So this is what Sarvani uh, had uh, had been requesting me. So this would have been a nice uh, moment for her uh, had she waited uh, uh, till till this moment. And uh, you can see another uh, structure of uh, these clusters. You can see beautiful. I think chemistry students will be now uh, thrilled. normally chemistry students they uh, they are not very happy that are kitna physics padha rahe ho kitna physics pila rahe ho na you see that, that so when you are you are when your physics is perfect then only you can see uh, this kind of uh, images otherwise uh, it is not possible so at least take home message for chemistry student is that uh, what is possible and what is not possible that is take home message at least you can collaborate you may not be able to do uh, AFM uh, any time soon of that level, but at least you know what is possible hmm? and why uh, it is possible, how it is possible. So you can analyze the results uh, which might have been uh, done, uh, might have been given by some other lab. So that is also uh, quite useful for me. Uh, that uh, at least i know how what is the mechanism what is the science behind uh, so clear images and uh, this is quite amazing that you can when you compare uh, the stm images with the uh, af images so so beautiful actually and then you have the dft images right so i had to spend lot of time in finding these uh, uh examples so uh, from different different uh, papers so this came out in the science paper obviously real space in 2012 science paper uh, this uh, this kind of uh, work came out so even today as of today if you do this kind of work for catalysis samples so this will not be less than uh, science paper believe me so afm uh, is a technique please trust me that uh, on that if you do a very high quality afm measurement like this just based on uh, afm you can resolve a lot of mysteries of polymer science catalysis science obviously physics uh, uh, problems are uh, 
already there but i my personal experience is that uh, there is there is lot to be discovered in uh, catalysis science because those things are still opening up uh, problems are still opening up forget about biology biology there are a lot of interesting challenges which are coming up okay in comparison to physics physics there is not much and in physics there are there are already a lot of uh, experts which are racing for the same piece of uh, cake hmm. so interesting challenges are there in microscopy when you collaborate with a uh, chemistry student you can do this kind of a uh, interesting work and there is a lesson for physics students also that you must talk to your chemistry friends so with this i end uh, this part and uh, i would like to take any question so we have half an hour left and i will be able to uh, teach you the next part any question you can unmute yourself any comment suggestion devyani hmm dinesh sir uh, yes uh, sir is there any difference in different uh, contact mode and tapping mode height image i didn't understand can you repeat your question is there any difference in contact mode and tapping mode height image uh, there is no uh, difference uh, in the information because uh, the feedback loop in one case uh, you are trying to uh, give the feedback as cantilever deflection and another case you are doing uh, amplitude correction so in one case you are doing uh, deflection correction and uh, in another case you are doing amplitude correction and both are very sensitive to the so now your question can be answered uh, by the physics that uh, which one is more sensitive deflection uh, cantilever deflection or uh, tapping mode amplitude uh, so i would say that uh, i mean it's an interesting question actually uh, it's very interesting question uh, i would say that uh, in contact mode uh, you're already in uh, repulsive force mode so slight change in the topography will result into large change in the cantilever deflection because you are already in the uh, repulsive mode and repulsive mode uh, curve is very uh, steep as you know so it depends upon uh, the steepness of the curve so that's why people say that uh, topography uh, is quite uh, high res highly resolved in contact mode especially the z uh, z scale z scale you can resolve down to uh, sub angstrom in contact mode in uh, tapping mode uh, one is going uh, in and out of uh, attractive and repulsive forces so essentially you are measuring df divided by dz so force gradient uh, is being measured and this force gradient how are you measuring force gradient will uh, change the uh amplitude of the cantilever which is uh oscillating sinusoidally so let me think uh, there uh it's interesting question, question actually you this after a long time uh, this question has come which is for, which is forcing me to tell you that i have to think about that i this this question answer to this question is not there in the books i have to just think from my own on my own but i think i'm close closer to the answer uh, let i'll i'll answer it uh, maybe some other time hmm? very good question thank you dubai okay. an amplitude change will depend upon also uh, the spring constant of the uh, uh, re resonating tip as well as uh, its free amplitude how how much you are changing but i believe there is no direct uh, i have not seen at least there is no direct comparison but it is interesting that same surface if you image using contact mode and tapping mode which one will be much better people say that uh, contact mode is high resolution because of the uh, steepness of the repulsive force mode force forces 
that is that is standard uh, concept uh, obviously the, yes there are there are a lot of comparison between tapping mode and non contact mode it both are dynamic modes uh, there is and people always say that uh, non contact mode resolution is far 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 better far better actually that's what you saw in the park uh, instruments presentation park instruments they are the leaders in uh, non contact let me tell you uh, they uh, doing non contact you can yeah, how can betterly image the height see uh, number one that uh, non contact mode uh, you do in the frequency modulation frequency modulation is much more sensitive than the amplitude modulation so tapping mode is done the amplitude mod modulation a number 2 is that uh, uh, frequency modulation modulated uh, non contact measurements are done in ultra high vacuum so there is no capillary force so that gives you true image because capillary forces are not there so uh, you are purely measuring attractive wonderful forces uh, so there you get much clarity about the sample Uh, the third thing is that in tapping mode uh, there is a small uh, vertical force there is no shear force zero shear force but there is still uh, normal force vertical force because you are tapping it so uh, which is completely absent in uh, non contact so non contact is non contact i mean you are not touching the surface at all so uh, that is uh, that results into a true Uh, that is called actually non contact mode image is called true image actually that's how arc uh, uh, instruments people they market uh, uh, their product that it is it's called true image so but it is uh, i leave this uh, answer open uh, to me uh, because i i need to Uh, this is a long answer actually i mean you can we can keep on debating this uh, this question it's a wonderful question actually and there was another question which was which was quite uh, interesting uh, somebody asked me in the last lecture i was thinking i wasn't uh, i wanted to compliment uh, that was a, that was related to my own life rather than i think harshita or somebody asked this question that aap jab psc student the tab 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 bhi aap is tarike se sochte the ke life ke bare mein which is uh, <laughs> which is very very interesting question actually sometimes students ask so interesting question that maine bhi nahi socha tha us time se anyway any other any other question darren uh, normally you ask lot of questions in the classes but i think you you are not liking the zoom classes see now i am back to my house so i cannot use even uh, my office uh, <laughs> i'm trying my best hmm? yes there you are you are completely quiet uh, in this non physical electronic classes <laughs> you you were the i think all these students have become quiet they were so uh, interactive like nikitra is quiet prabhu is prabhu sometimes asks questions but mostly is rizwana is quiet rizwana was very much interested in the electron uh, uh, microscopy and sarvani is back sarvani uh, did you see the last slide there was something for you can you open your mic no can you repeat that uh, your uh, can you i am we are not able to hear you no sir i didn't okay so i recommend that you uh, uh, look at the recording uh, there was something uh, for you Uh, where i showed that how uh, like ring yeah. ring ring type of molecules can be imaged by uh, non contact uh, afm beautiful image atomic uh, resolution image i showed for uh, you know okay. for pi electron uh, ring you know, pi, pi electrons on sitting on the ring benzene ring two benzene rings fused together i don't know the formula of that uh, uh, molecule <laughs> uh, i don't i don't care also because i don't care at this moment obviously i care but not that at this moment what i see is basically pi electron that that's what matter to me <laughs> yeah electron density yeah 
so any other question uh, yeah uh, nilu nilu bhai uh, don't worry nilu i will i will uh, teach you xps xrd everything uh, i promise you and your questions are some of your earlier questions are there uh, for uh, xrd and uh, xps i am going to teach all of these things so any question for today no sir no sir i Today. I know that you don't need many people don't need AFM, but you may not need AFM now, but you may need in future. So, uh, so it is good that you learn it now. At least you have you will remember something. Okay, you may not need now, but you may need in future. It will make you ready. Shri Ram, any question? Ah, uh, sir, I have. How do they do this uh, Z positioning? Actually, we do we do any predictive uh, calculations whether the tip is going to be in attractive or repulsive. region or we just blindly move the tip and then observe <laughs> very very good very interesting question i thought somebody will ask me this question uh, it's good that you asked this question. Uh, there is a technique called uh, suppose uh, now you think uh, yourself uh, flying in a hot air balloon and uh, in your hand uh, there is a connection there is a controller uh, by which you can increase the uh, hot air uh, you know volume in the gas so uh, of course uh, a, when you are riding a balloon your eyes see uh, your eyes act like a camera uh, okay so that you can see oncoming hill uh, you know the hill is approaching then you can uh, start uh, uh, increasing the hot air so balloon start rising up so same thing uh, what exactly happens that in afm this uh, when uh, suppose uh, atomic force microscopy tip is flying over uh, a flat surface so that means there is no uh, change in the force fine that means life is easy uh, scanning is easy so your question is that uh, how does afm tip knows that uh, what lies ahead for example uh, there is a valley which is coming or there is a um, uh, there is a hill which is coming so please remember that uh, to answer this question that you have to uh, understand the shape of the uh, probe the tip shape of the tip is uh, slanted at certain angle so it is either pyramidal or, uh, or 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 conical so what exactly what exactly happens uh, happened so let me share with you uh, right board so uh, so tip is something like this and uh, so suppose you have this surface and uh, now the surface goes like this so what is what exactly happens that uh, when uh, this tip is uh, over uh, this flat surface so these atoms are closer to these are the atoms which are closer to the uh, underlying surface not these uh, side atoms so the side uh, these side atoms uh, are far away so the force wonderful force from the side atoms will be much weaker uh, in comparison to uh, the atoms which are sitting at the tip now once you uh, bring this uh, close to uh, a, a valley so what exactly happens that uh, the atoms uh, somewhere here will uh, start feeling already uh, the force from uh, the tip uh, from from this side uh, side walls of this uh, uh, hill so then that will alert the uh, uh, feedback loop okay that this is time to uh, move uh, this up this will start uh, this will start moving the cantilever up because this whole this force will start uh, acting so this uh, slanted uh, part of the cantilever helps that to it's like you know looking ahead actually this this part is basically like looking in this direction that what lies ahead similarly when if you take uh, a valley so in, in valley also uh, if you if you basically uh, take uh, this uh, uh, tip which is at certain angle so the moment valley is easy basically that uh, when this tip uh, somewhere moves 
uh, here so you can see that the force is lesser and lesser so to compensate that force uh, for example you want that force to be uh, somewhere uh, plus uh, let's say 1 nanonewton i write plus because repulsive force so suppose force is 1 uh, nanonewton so this will uh, start uh, going down to now the force has become uh, for example 1 piconewton because the force has reduced because you are far away from uh, this uh, these atoms so in order to uh, bring this back to 1 nanonewton so this uh, feedback loop will start uh, pushing the uh, cantilever downwards so this is called constant uh, force measurement or constant uh, deflection measurement because essentially this force is being measured by uh, laser bouncing on the tip of the cantilever so laser bounce here so uh, whether the cantilever is like this or uh, okay uh, or uh, which, which is true for uh, uh, attractive force or your cantilever is 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 like this which is true for uh, repulsive force so that is detected by uh, so this is a complex um, another thing i would like to tell you that uh, as i mentioned that uh, this depends upon p i d i think many catalysis laboratories they have got this uh, furnaces in fact my own laboratory also has this furnace where the temperature control uh, the same problem with the temperature control that how do you know that temperature is going up so basically what what it, what they what it does that it collects uh, the reading for certain uh, number of time so if uh, there is a rising trend uh, in the force or the current or temperature so that means uh, so it it basically looks at the trend for some time and this these measurements are being done at ultra high speed so so uh, so proportionally so one way is that basically you take the difference of uh, this and uh, this this is your set point for example i tell you something uh, uh, with the uh, furnace actually so for for example you have a tube furnace and and it is similar to the afm basically and you want to set the temperature for example 600 uh, degree c and um, now uh, and you have a coil here which you are heating and uh, this is the thermocouple which is measuring you measuring the live temperature so live temperature is for example suppose it is 500 and so obviously it will look at the difference between 500 and 600 and the dif difference is basically 100 so uh, 100 degree c so power will be proportional to 100 so amount of power applied uh, will be uh, amount of current applied will be proportional to uh, 100 so, uh, so that is not a very right uh, way of looking at it so this is called proportional control okay most of the most of the furnaces are on off they are they don't they are not even proportional control so most there are there is one very crude control which is there in your toaster so your toaster uh, works based on on off control okay your when you toast your bread uh, basically acts on on off either it is on or off so there is no uh, there is no variable current so entire voltage like 220 voltage will be either on or 220 volt by, uh, will be either off so that that's the reason that sometimes you get burnt toast and you don't get where perfection so uh, next step better is basically this proportional con control so this is proportional control and here also uh, there is a problem that you uh, either you overshoot or undershoot basically suppose you want to maintain the temperature around uh, 600 flat you don't want to change it so so when you apply this for example you are uh, below 600 so uh, when you uh, send the command that okay you increase the uh, uh, temperature so this will overshoot so and then the next command uh, goes oh you decrease the current so then it it starts basically uh, fluctuating around this so another way is that differential so uh, or sorry p integral integral 
so basically you integrate over certain period of time so you keep watching watching so that it is rising so then you 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 basically uh, you integrate over certain time and then based on that you take the decision that okay so it's a corrective next next corrective and next corrective steps and last one is basically differential so the same thing is done uh, to maintain the height in afm uh, in this case uh, instead of current uh, we use uh, uh, amplitude uh, when you are trying to measure in tapping mode and in contact mode uh, the current is basically or or sorry temperature is uh, your current temperature is replaced furnace temperature is replaced by uh, deflection of the cantilever which is read by the laser so i hope it is uh, clear any other question uh, yes sir it's clear how we do this pad uh, control but before we get the signals that when we initially position these things for example in contact oh. mode it is in the uh, attractive uh, repulsive region and then the non contact mode it is in the attractive region so that's why i am asking initial initial position initial okay initial okay good 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 initial basically uh, uh, there is a mechanism uh, so initial uh, landing uh, of the tip is uh, done in a coarse way and uh, normally the software automatically does the initial landing of the tip uh, so you basically select the mode that you want contact mode so when you select the contact mode uh, software starts lowering the uh, the tip closer to the uh, sample and uh, and also it is measuring the uh, cantilever deflection so um, when it sees that there is no deflection uh, in the cantilever cantilever is straight so that means it keeps lowering 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 the moment it uh, it sees the uh, uh, downward bending so then it uh, then it says engage that means there is a message which comes that tip has engaged to the surface the, the moment uh, the cantilever comes to the attractive region got it so that means it will be downward right so the downward uh, it will bend downward so then uh, then it start lowering the uh, speed so it doesn't uh, lower the for example i have to approach here your question is that i have this is my substrate and i have to approach here so how do i do that so initially uh, when when the cantilever is quite high so there is zero force so cantilever starts motor starts moving the cantilever down because there is no force so it is comfortable it is moving down 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 and initially what will happen initially it will come into the attractive mode so cantilever instead of this flat it start bending like this the moment it bends then it says that now cantilever is engaged that means engagement means it has come into the force field so this is called force field so it has come into the range so now uh, now uh, for example now you said that you want to do the tapping mode now tapping mode you know that you it is done uh, in the uh, in the in the in the uh, oscillating uh, uh, cantilever mode so so it will keep on uh, going down okay so it will keep on lowering and uh, it will keep on lowering uh, until Uh, the cantilever start bending so that means now cantilever is in touch now when you say that i want to do the tapping mode measurement tapping mode measurement because it is calculated this height so it will it will now raise it again uh, somewhere like you know 150 nanometer and then it will apply this voltage you understand what i mean yes, so it is calculated the distance now you got it now yeah. yeah so if we give we specifically the chemical composition of the material so we can we draw this the dlvo theory that is a curve right sorry in the dlvo theory they draw a curve with respect to the position uh, distance from the material so if you know the chemical portion, composition can we draw that curve using curve uh see dlvo theory is uh, applied when uh, both the surfaces are charged now uh, you know the charge on your sample uh, for example your sample is positively charged sometimes you do know or sometimes you do not know so uh, dlv theory is applied when see uh, then you have to uh, be very careful what is the charge on your sample so sorry tip so tip is normally negatively because tip is basically silicon tip or silicon nitride tip so silicon tip will have uh, coating of silicon oxide so silicon oxide is 
uh, normally uh, slightly negatively charged. So when you apply DLV theory, you have to first thing you have to know what is the pH condition and uh, uh, or if it is you're you're not doing in in any electrolyte, you are just doing it in air. So first thing is that uh, if you take a non a known um, uh, charged surface, for example, positively charged surface, and then you bring uh, tip closer to that, so then this uh, electric force microscopy will tell you that what is the charge on the surface. Once you characterize the charge on the surface, then it will be easier for you to apply the DLV theory because it's it's quite uh, uh, so. When you apply DLV theory, then wonderful force will not be relevant because uh, charge charge interaction will mask the uh, Van der Waals interaction because when two surfaces are charged, so electrical force will be too much too la large for uh, so I'll teach you that because that's the that this the, your question is basically reserved in the specialized mode. You know, I teach uh, another presentation where I teach this electrochemical force microscopy, like specialized modes actually, electrical modes and all these charged surfaces. There I teach those uh, those. But it's a brilliant question actually. It's a it's an advanced level question. I would say that yes. So I don't know whether I got your question right. Can you give me one specific? Uh, 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 example so that I, I can go closer to what you need. No, just uh, I want to know whether the we can do an initial calculation using the surface atoms. Uh, oh, okay. The equation. Yes, you can you can calculate uh, using DLV theory uh, easily uh, because uh, we have the formula and we have the formula of wonder walls from the previous presentation. You can definitely calculate. Yes, okay. because we you know. But uh, I told you. Uh, you have to you need still the charge on both the surface because if you remember dlv theory formula you need q1 and q2 both so how will you so, get how will you get charge uh, uh, on the surfaces so you can artificially that, induce huh? you can induce artificially okay okay i, I remember one thing that uh, i am inviting one iit uh, retired iit madras uh, uh, professor uh, for next Monday, we have uh, a lecture. Next Monday, no, Tuesday, seventh July. Please, your question will be answered, uh, which is called Calvin probe uh, technique. So, in Calvin probe technique, uh, you can uh, uh, basically quantify the charges on the surface based on the DLV theory and other things. Uh, you can do Calvin probe in force mode, force spectroscopy also. I mean, I have done, I have published paper using Calvin probe. I have a Jack's paper on that when I came initially uh, to NCL. Uh, but uh, like, as I said that in DLV theory, uh, you need to know Q1 and Q2 and R uh, distance between both the surfaces, then you can calculate if you have the amount of charges ready, that number. And it is a, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, you see, it's not trivial. To know the Q1 and Q2, that's why you need uh, Calvin probe microscopy. <laughs> so you need to have that number. Uh, it's not easy because okay, thank you. please remember that uh, even zeta potential doesn't give you uh, uh, the charges on the surfaces. It doesn't give you actually. So yes, A microscopy can give you. What I'm teaching, this technique can take you to even it can give you dielectric constant uh, mapping of the surfaces. Uh, the atomic force microscopy is uh, amazing. I, I just like, like it. So, you know, you can, you, you, you throw any question and it will answer actually, but you need to be really uh, very deep into the science actually, uh, but it is amazing technique. Amazing, amazing. Uh, anyway, so next question. Akshay. Uh, Kundan. Shiva Murthy, Supriya, Rijwana, Dr. Saab, Dr. Khan. Yes, sir. Uh, sir actually, uh, I, have just, I, uh, I, ha I have one question in my mind. I don't know whether it's an appropriate question or not. But okay, shoot. I mean, Your questions are always very good quality. 
calculate also the amount of surface charge uh, let me tell you i did one project for one automobile company i think rajendra will also love to i can give hardcore physics example but i will give you a uh, uh, engineering uh, example uh, application wise but because people sometimes say are bahut theory ho raha hai theory 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 i'll tell you the example uh, so one automobile company uh, cto uh, himself he came i don't want to uh, name him but anyway so he came with two three problems and uh, he asked me that can you solve this problem uh, one problem was uh, that uh, there was a drive when recession was there it was around 2008 that uh, all these automobile companies were uh, mandated to reduce the weight of uh, all the components for example uh, tatas try to weigh, reduce the weight of uh, all the components suppose there are 1000 component so all the thousand components are sourced from different vendors they were all asked that okay you reduce the weight uh, by 10% now like metal sheet is there and uh, so reducing the weight uh, of each component means uh, for example i am a paint company so i uh, have designed my chemistry in such a way that uh, uh, for certain alloy uh, it will work nicely but other alloys it will not work uh so once the once the person who is pr- providing me cold rolled steel for my car he has changed the they have changed the surface so whether it is compatible uh, for the paint that was a problem so then um so we did lot of characterization on uh, charge of the because one of his layer was not uh, adhering to the under layer and he, he was interested whether Uh, there is a problem with the charges that charges are not uniform as rejwana has asked this question that uh, so then we were we gave him uh, id then we did uh, map the charges on the polymer surfaces we said that okay these are the pockets that's why this uh, see when you uh, coat suppose this is the surface and you paint uh, using uh, a polymer paint on the surface and you realize that there are patches somewhere uh, the paint is peeling off somewhere here it is sticking well but here it is peeling off so what is the reason that uh, the surface is the paint is peeling off from one area uh, one of the reason is that uh, the chemistry is not the same here and here and why the chemistry is not same because uh, suppose here there are there were more negative charges maybe certain pockets for some reasons there was positive charges so we were able to tell him that uh, these areas are uh, not uniformly uh, charged uh, uh, by negative charge basically so they, we were able to tell that okay see this these areas are less negative charge and here the charge has become positive so this was amazing um, and he was very happy so uh, so this is the real life industry uh, uh, you know solution this in similar way we saw so many industry problems and another problem was for asian paints and uh, asian paint came with this problem that uh, same adhesion adhesiveness of the paint again same problem we saw their problems also and uh, for example one contact uh, lens in industry person they came i think alzheimer some sometime, sometime johnson and johnson they came for certain afm things so so afm is so uh, likable uh, instrument uh, for industry because it's so quantitative so you ask the question and it will be able to deliver uh, very nicely without any problem but uh, thing is that one has to be thorough in uh, the basics there is no shortcut so one has to really go through theory so nicely so if your theory theoretical uh, 
uh, grasp is not proper application cannot come you can't think of application if theory is incomplete so so people try to bypass the theory and jump to the application because they are driven by the application mostly engineers so it's my in my opinion it is a societal thing because you can't understand the uh, solution unless you have not done the homework so there is no shortcut in my own experience uh, entire career in, in fact even today i feel myself incomplete uh, completely dumb uh, i'm telling you uh, that uh, there is so much to learn actually uh, okay sorry for the longer uh, answer rijwana so it answer is that you it is possible hmm? i give you some several examples yes sir supriya so people who are on the silent mode all the time prabhu prabhu is not silent but nikitra ha huh? nikitra how are you doing ha mm -hmm. huh? okay so you are uh, we are not allowed to enter ncl right there is corona there hmm? yes sir hmm. yes sir okay. okay so tomorrow i will announce that tomorrow there may be a class because i have to speed it up and finish it and i have to start raman so most probably i will teach tomorrow so be ready uh, 11:30 tomorrow hmm? okay sir okay